Spawn Camp here. In this video, we'll be putting together this trebuchet with just a few Unity cubes, some hinges, and a rigid body or two. We'll have this thing ready to chunk some pumpkins across the scene in no time. So I'm gonna start with a scene that I already have set up. There's not much here. It's just a ground plane, a few materials like dirt, grass, and wood, those types of things. First, let's create a empty game object, and we'll name it Trebuchet. I like to make sure its transform is at zero on the X, Y, and Z. And then we'll create another empty as a child for our left support and another for our right support. One for the arm and one for the weight, which we won't use, so don't worry about it. Now let's create a 3D cube as a child of our trebuchet. And this will be our base. Let's scale it to 3. 0.5 and 7 and we'll drag a brown material onto it. Next we'll just create a cube that we'll use for a guide to line up our left and right support posts. So as a child of our left support we'll create another cube. This will be named left post and this guy gets scaled at 0.5, 5 and 1. We'll add a rigid body component and be sure to check kinematic so these guys don't move. Then we'll grab it with the move tool and pull it out of the ground and to the left of our guide cube. So now I'm going to repeat that same process for the right post and put it as a child of our right support. You could just duplicate the left support and drag it under, whichever way works. When you got those finished up, we can add some materials to add some color. So this next step is optional. I'm going to now adjust my view and select my camera and in the game object menu I can align it with the view. Now back to the trebuchet and each support I'll create a new cube. This is just a support to add detail. It's only graphical and doesn't need a rigid body. In fact it doesn't even need a collider. So we'll just right click the box collider and do away with it. After the first one we can just duplicate it making sure that you're in world space and not local you can then rotate it around its Y and add some materials. We'll do the exact same thing for the right support. So I'll just grab these two that I already made, duplicate it, and pull it over. So I think that's the base complete. We can look around. It's looking not too shabby. So let's go ahead and do our arm. So Let's grab this cube that we were using as a guide. Drag and drop it on the arm so it becomes a child. Then we'll select the entire arm game object and pull it up to the top of these posts. And I almost forgot again. Let's select the cube and rename this to main arm. Now let's scale it to 1, 1, and 7. And make it look more like an arm by adding a material. And it looks a bit too long, so let's go with 6 on its Z scale instead. Now this will be moving, unlike our base. So let's add a rigid body. This time is kinematic, is unchecked. And adjust its mass to 10, so it's got some heft to it. We're going to duplicate the main arm to make a secondary arm. and we can scale it in half, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 2.5, and adjust it to sit at the end. We'll also half the mass to be 5. Next we want to add a component and we'll use a fixed joint to fix it to our bigger section. So just drag in our main arm as the connected rigid body. Next, let's repeat that process for our smallest section of arm that we'll call sling arm. So we want to scale it, and on this one we'll half it as well. So we'll use 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and 1.25. So position this one as well. Don't change the mass on the rigid body, I don't think, on this, but you could half that as well. And then we're just going to change the connected rigid body to be the secondary arm. So our base and our arm are both rigid, but now we need to connect those. 
But before we do, I do change the mass on the last arm. So let's change that to 2.5. First, we'll select the entire arm game object and rotate it by negative 30. Looks okay. And then position it so a little less than a quarter of it's hanging over the front of our base. Now we'll select the left post and we need to add another component. This time we'll use a hinge joint. Now it's hard to see sometimes, but with our gizmos turned on, you can pan around the scene and you'll find this little brown arrow. Think of this as the pin that goes through our hinge. So our left post gets a hinge and our right post also gets a hinge. So if you built yours like mine, the axis is fine for these hinges, but our anchor is a little off. So let's first start with our right post and we're going to position our anchor until it looks like it's in the center of our arm. Now we'll do the same on our left post. And since we use guides to build this and each post is basically the same, the offset of your hinge should be the same. So now the hinges are there, so let's go ahead and connect it. And what we're connecting it to is our main arm. So on each of our support, just go ahead and drag our main arm into the connected rigid body. So if we hit play real quick, you'll see that we have some kind of contraption and it's being held together. So let's go ahead and give it a way to launch something. And we're gonna do that by using a weight. We'll start by creating a new cube. We'll reset its transform and get this guy aligned at the back end of our arm and a little bit lower. I try to keep the y-axis aligned with the center of the back face of our arm. It'll make connecting the hinge easier. After we get it positioned where we want it and flick on some lights so I can see what I'm doing, we'll hop over to the inspector, give this guy a name like weight, and add a rigid body. And this is a weight, so let's make this guy pretty big with a mass of 100. So we can see gravity does its thing to the weight. So let's connect it to our contraption and turn that gravity into pumpkin chunkin power. So to do this, we want to add yet another hinge joint. Now we can expand out our trebuchet and drag in our main arm as the connected body. The hinge should be oriented the same as all the others and we'll adjust the Y component of the anchor to get the gizmo almost centered with the arm. And now if we play test, we'll see that it's working as planned. To have a way to trigger this to fall, we'll go back to the weight rigid body and check is kinematic. So now when we play, it'll be locked in place and through code, we'll flip it off and trigger the trebuchet. So before we get all crazy with the code, let's at least give this thing something to chunk. So let's collapse all this down and start with a 3D object. And I'm making a pumpkin, so I'll start with the sphere. I'll name it pumpkin pull it up so I can see it and create a nice orange material to slap onto it. Hold up a sec, let me just bake these lights. Ah, uh, much better. I'm just gonna duplicate our pumpkin, squash it a bit and use this for the top. I'll make it green and we don't need the collider so we'll just remove it. So now I'll parent everything to the pumpkin and finish it up with a rigid body component. We'll keep all these settings and voila, we now have a pumpkin that's perfect for chunking. And just for demonstration, I'll just add this bit to the end of our arm and position our pumpkin and see how far this thing goes. All right, so it's looking good so far. We could definitely make some tweaks to change this, but let's just see how far this thing goes once we add a sling. So let's position our pumpkin beneath our trebuchet. Our sling will yank it from underneath and add a bit of extra momentum. So once we get it inside the trebuchet and where it's not clipping into the ground, I'll get distracted and add a few prop pumpkins. And once I'm focused again, we'll need to add one final hinge joint to our pumpkin. Now this joint will connect to the tip of our trebuchet. For this anchor, we'll be tweaking the Y component and just get it as close as you can to the tip of the trebuchet.
To finish up the joint, we'll drag the smallest arm, or in our case, the sling arm, into the connected body. And if we play test real quick, it's working. It doesn't look like our desired result, but we'll do the rest in the script. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get rid of this extra weight that I made by accident. So now let's finish it up with that script. We'll be adding this onto our trebuchet root game object, and you can name it whatever you like. Give it a second to compile and double click it to open it up. We want this to do two things. First, trigger our trebuchet, so we'll need a public rigid body for our weight. And then next, we want to release the pumpkin, so we'll use a public game object pumpkin. So we'll use two checks in our update loop. Both will be used with the spacebar. First we'll say if input.getKey down, then we want to release the weight to start the trebuchet. And after the weight is released, we'll check for get key up, and this will launch the pumpkin. To release the weight, we do what we did in the inspector by typing out weight.iskinematic equals false. To launch the pumpkin, we'll actually be destroying the hinge that we connected to it. So to get a reference to it, we'll say hinge joint, hinge to destroy. Then we'll assign it by getting the component off the pumpkin game object. And finally, destroying the hinge to destroy. Now we can save this script and head back into Unity. Now let's go ahead and assign our new variables. So for the weight, we want to drag in our weight. And for the pumpkin, we want to drag in our pumpkin. So I'm going to rearrange the camera one more time because I think our pumpkin's going to go a lot farther with that sling. So let's go and play test. So as soon as we hit the space bar, the trebuchet is going to start. And then once it starts, we can release it and try to launch the pumpkin at the perfect time. Well, that's it. Hope this inspires you to create your own contraptions. And until next time, Spawn Camp out.